you know, my philosophy has always been, if you do that in a healthy way and you get those quick results, it motivates people. It's like running downhill. We all love running downhill. And I, I got to say, you, you said this at the very beginning, watching those numbers change is a mental thing. I think so much of our health physically is foundationally based on our mental capacity and mental well-being. Yes, 100%. 100%. Um, you know, and you always hear, I mean, you probably tell your patients the same thing. When you're, you're positive about things, everything trends better for you. Right. You know, you're, you're negative about it. All of a sudden, the numbers start going the wrong way. It's kind of a crazy thing that our mind is so powerful. And we need to wrap our mind into our body. So it's one thing. It's not mind body. It's mind body. It's one thing. No, that's, I mean, I couldn't have said it better. It's perfectly said. All right, let me ask, let's, let's talk a little bit about a few things. I, there are a lot of misconceptions out there about the body and getting in shape, right? So let's, let's go through the definition of, of, of those two things and that sort of concept. And let's kind of talk to our listeners a little bit about what you, what you think of that and how you feel. What are your thoughts on that whole idea? Well, what happens is a lot of people don't understand going into a gym. It's a new thing or lifting weights. And a big, big misconception is, hey, if I stop lifting, all this muscle will turn to fat. Or I don't want to get bulky. You know, if I lift, I don't want to be bulky. Right. Uh, you know, it's, it, those are two major misconceptions. Number one, muscle is muscle, fat is fat. It's two separate items. I can't make an apple into an orange. But, uh, but you can build muscle, you can burn fat, you can build muscle and, and out eat yourself so that you don't burn any fat, like you will keep the fat on your body. So you have to do the nutrition like what you write about. And, uh, and what I do together, it's a combination. I look at it as three parts. You have the weightlifting, you have the nutrition, then you have the cardio. And when people say, oh, you got to up your metabolism, up your metabolism, nobody actually understands what that means. Oh, what do you mean up my metabolism? How am I going to do that? <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, that'll work. Yeah, well, right. <laughs> so this is why I put weightlifting is, is number one in, in my programs. Because if we build lean muscle, lean muscle burns more calories every day just being you. So by upping your metabolism, what we're trying to do is chase time. As we get older, our body deteriorates. We want to build those muscles so that we can fight the deterioration. So instead of having less muscle at the end of one year, we have more muscle at the end of one year. And that muscle burns calories. The more calories it burns, the, the more wiggle room we have in our nutrition. Um, so then, then, we have to make sure the nutrition is on point. And then thirdly, and I bring it down a rung, is your cardio. We have to do enough cardio to keep our heart healthy, get us sweating, get our body to lose extra calories. But it's not what I want to base our program on. A lot of people base their program on cardio. They'll right. do way too much cardio and they don't realize why if they don't do cardio for two, three days, all of a sudden they gained weight. It's right. because they're, they're pushing it down and pushing it down. And so you, you need to really base it off of weights, nutrition, cardio down below. I love that. And, and I'll tell you, and I bring this up to patients all the time, right around, and you know this better than I do in the whole concept. You know, when we get to about 30 years old, we start to lose muscle mass. And every decade, we lose a significant amount of muscle mass. Now, we can't stop the aging process. That would be nice. Maybe, uh, but you can slow down. You know, our, our bodies are just in this world of inflammation, right? We're battling inflammation. You know, when you watch these professional athletes at the end of a game get dropped into a bucket of ice, it's really like putting out the fire, right? That entire fire of the body. So everything, I, I can't think of a day where I've discussed inflammation less than 30 times with patients. It's my elbow hurts. It's my heart disease. It's my lungs, my asthma, my seal, whatever it is, it's an inflammatory process. We can't stop it, but if we can slow it down and live with it in a healthy way, that's how we live this nice, long, healthy life. So I love that whole idea. And the other thing you've mentioned this, you know, you can out eat 
all the exercise in the world. If you do not have sound nutrition, and now I'm, I'm going to, I can't wait to, I'm a little apprehensive to ask this question, but I've always said, as it pertains to weight loss specifically, not so much cardio and musculoskeletal and strength training, as it pertains to weight loss specifically, I really feel it's like 80 or 85% food and 10 or 15% related or 15 or 20% related to exercise. So many people think, ah, oh, I work out three hours a day so I can eat anything I want, yet the scale doesn't move. It has to go back to these three building blocks as you said them, and, and they work sort of cohesively, right? It's that, you know, that, that collective effort between the three. And I, I love that you bring that in there.